Hey, I'm Daniel Schachter. Uh, I'm a psychology professor at Harvard University here in the Department of Psychology, where I've been studying various aspects of memory for the past uh, 25 years since uh, landing at Harvard. One of the things that's always interested in me about memory has to do with why it is that memory can sometimes go wrong. Why is it that our memories are subject to forgetting and to distortion. And about 15 years ago now, I wrote a book called The Seven Sins of Memory, where I set out to try to see whether there were basic categories of memory errors. And I came to the conclusion that there were seven fundamental types of memory errors. Uh, and by analogy, I talked about them in relation uh, in relation to the seven deadly sins, and so I call them the seven sins of memory. Uh, the first three have to do with different kinds of forgetting. So I talk about transience. Memory is subject to loss of information over time. Absent-mindedness. Memory sometimes fails because we simply don't pay attention to what we're doing, and there's a breakdown at the interface of attention and memory. And blocking, and that's when we block on information. We might have a tip of the tongue experience. The information is there, we know it's there, but we can't get it out. The next three of the seven sins have to do with cases where memory is present, but it's wrong. Memory distortion. So I talk about the memory sin of misattribution. So that's when we, we remember some aspect of an event correctly, but we attribute it to the wrong source. We might think that a friend told us something new and interesting when in fact we actually heard it on the radio. Suggestibility is another kind of memory distortion where information is suggested to us and we incorporate that into our memory and as a result our memory becomes distorted. Bias is the sixth of the seven memory sins and it refers to the fact that our current knowledge and beliefs can skew and distort our memory for the past and finally, the seventh sin has to do with persistence. Uh, the fact that sometimes we can have persisting, intrusive memories that can be quite psychologically distressing that we can't get out of our minds. So why is it that we have these seven sins of memory? One of the arguments I try to make in, in the book was that they're not really sins in the sense that they're fundamental flaws or defects in memory. I conceive them as prices we pay for benefits in memory that make it work well most of the time. It's easiest to see, I think, with a phenomenon of persistence. If we have an emotionally arousing or traumatic experience, it may persist, keep us up at night, and so forth, but it's probably a good thing that our memory uh, strongly records and makes available uh, traumatic experiences because that allows us to avoid those experiences in, in the future. More recently, I've gotten interested in how we use memory to think about the future because I think there's actually a tight connection to the question of why memory is sometimes distorted. It turns out that although we tend to think of memory as involving time travel into the past, we think of memory as recalling a past experience, memory is also really important for the future. So that when we project ourselves into the future and we imagine novel situations, we actually need to draw on our memory and use that memory in a flexible way. So we can take bits and pieces of our past memories, recombine them, and imagine novel situations that we might have to deal with in the future based on our past experience. So we've done recently a bunch of brain scanning studies in my lab over the past decade where we've seen that many of the same brain regions become active when we remember the past and imagine the future. There seems to be a really tight connection between the two. And one reason why we think that might be so is because we need a flexible memory system to allow us to imagine novel future events. And yet one downside of that arrangement, having a flexible memory system that allows us to take bits and pieces of the past to imagine the future, is that it may also make us prone to memory errors, the kind of memory errors that I talked about when I talk about misattribution error, errors in the seven sins. So one of the most exciting topics for me lately has been the relationship between remembering the past 
and imagining the future and how all that relates to the tendency for memory to be prone to error.